Monsieur le Président, mes amis, euh, je suis très heureux d'être invité à prendre la parole aujourd'hui. Je voudrais pouvoir tout faire en français. La beauté de votre langue me ferait paraître bien plus éloquent. Mais vous rentrerez tous très tard chez vous. Et sûrement un peu confuse à cause de mon magnifique accent irlandais. Bonjour, je m'appelle Bono. I'm not a famous academic. I'm not a dedicated politician. I've never been to prison for my politics. Though, looking back, I've had some haircuts that should have been illegal. Just an Irish musician with a loud mouth. So it's a surprise, but also an honor for me to share this moment with you because it is an important moment, very important moment. Reading the news, who would blame you, Mr. President, if you'd said we've got so much on our plate right here in France, in Europe, we just haven't got time or resources to think about anywhere else. But you didn't. Minister Muscovici isn't short of domestic problems to solve either. Canny Minister Confin skills could work on a few matters closer to home as well. That doesn't seem to be the French way. 200 years after France taught the world about liberté, equality, and fraternity, you're still holding tight to the idea that a denial of human rights anywhere is a threat to those rights everywhere. Now, <clears throat> from what I hear during the conference today, there's been a lot of hard questions asked, a lot of challenging the old ways of doing things, and that's good demanding partnerships instead of patronage, justice instead of charity, transparency instead of opacity. One, with our now 80,000 members in France, have been so proud to be involved in this great dialogue. Surely these one volunteers embody the spirit of France. It just, it's who you are. It's your DNA. Even in a dark hour, you don't forget that the French ideal belongs to everyone, not just to France. It's hard stopping stuff, actually. It's mind-blowing, uh, the progress that's been made. And I think we should stop and think about it. Because who knew that we could cut the poverty rates? Extreme poverty rates have been cut in half since 1990. Experts tell us that if we keep this momentum going by 2030, the percentage of the population living on a euro a day, less than a euro a day, is going down, 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 all the way towards zero. Can you imagine that? Isn't that amazing? And France has been a major leader on this. The fight against AIDS, TB, and malaria. What an incredible record. More than 8 million people now on life-saving AIDS drugs. 500,000 of them thanks to French money. Malaria cut in 75%, I think it is, 75% in eight African countries since the year 2000. And at the heart of this incredible progress, the Global Fund, an idea, a French idea, dreamt up by France, a fantastic advertisement for your vision, your generosity, and your determination. The financial transaction tax. France has been first to dedicate part of its proceeds to development. As 11 countries in Europe are about to implement this FTT, let's get even more in. Let's get even more countries in. Fight against corruption, which we know kills more people than any disease. It's a disease in itself, but there's a vaccine for it. It's called transparency. Mr. President, you have led Europe in supporting legislation that making it illegal for extractive companies to hide the payments they make to governments in poor countries. That's how we're going to ensure that this corruption stops and that the benefits of oil and mineral wealth that lie beneath the feet of ordinary Africans are not stolen from their hands. This is, a big, this is big stuff, big, big stuff. And we would like to see this become the, the global standard, not just in extractive industries, but even further. You're a leader on this. Now, I could go on, but I don't want to wear out my welcome if I haven't already. My larger point is, is just thinking big. Please continue to think big, think long term. I know it's hard. 
I know the, the pressures that you I, actually I can't know the pressures you're under at a time like this but a program law would really help program law would it would protect the idea that whoever's leading the country has a fundamental commitment in the name of the French people to support the poorest to fight for globalization to fight for a globalization that works for all not just for a few so let me conclude by uttering a four-letter word, Mali. Because extreme poverty is not just an affront to our humanity, it's a threat to our security. That's clear now. Extreme poverty fuels the fire of extreme ideology. Now, you just took decisive military action. But, Monsieur Hollande, you are 100% right when you say it's time for now. It's now time for de development in Mali. So, you know, uh, this is, means a lot to me. Mali's a country I've been in love with. All musicians love Mali. Just over a year ago, I was in Tambuktu, actually. I was visited that library that people have read about. I was torched by the rebels as they were run out of town. Incredible library, you know, containing ancient manuscripts, remarkable insights into West Africa's past. Amazing, amazing place, burned to the ground. You know, if you're against human life and human history, that doesn't leave much room to be for anything. And now I know all of you in this room are for human life, for human history. Your strategy, not just for Mali, but, but for everyone is the same. You know, you want the fight against extreme poverty and injustice to have those hallmarks those classic French hallmarks. So let me end by just encouraging you to be French. Just be more French and be bold. Merci.